Hey guys, it's Jared from River Ready. I just wanted to go over uh, plug rods and just kind of my opinions on plug rods and uh, what I use. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, so with the plug rod, I generally pick a rod that's under nine foot. You wanna stay about seven to eight and a half foot. Those are the rods I use and those are the rods that I think work the best. So what I got here is a pretty basic setup and it's a really good multi-species setup too. So um, you don't have to fish just plugs on it. You can fish um, for sturgeon, stripers, everything. That's the cool thing about this rod and it's fairly cheap. So this is the Lamy Glass X11. It's a seven foot 10 rod, 15 to 40 pound. It's paired with an Okuma Coldwater 203D. Um, the reel is about $100 to $120. Bucks. The reel, or I mean the rod is about $100 as well. So um, for about 200 bucks, you get a pretty sweet combo that you can fish for pretty much anything in Northern California with as far as, as big fish. So um, definitely check those out. They are great plug, plug, plug rods and they have a ton of backbone with a sensitive tip that allows that plug to still work pretty good. So um, check those out. Those are the X11s. And uh, the next rod I use is the Lamy Glass Redline Series. Um, awesome rod, awesome reel. The reel is a Lose 300 Super Duty. Only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have a line counter, but I actually use this rod for a ton of different things. I throw swim baits with it for stripers in the river. I take it up on the lake and I go bass fishing with it. It's one of my back bouncing rods for row. And I also use it a ton for steelhead and trout. So um, pretty versatile rod that you can do anything with. It's about $50 more than the X11. The reel runs you about $200, but definitely look into it if you're fishing uh, for big fish, but like I said, the only downside is it doesn't have a line counter. Um, and then some of my more high-end rods and more expensive rods, um, this is an E6X. They're a little bit lighter, um, have pretty good backbone, but they have a lot lighter sensitive tip. And these are the rods that I'm fishing uh, with most of my um, weightless plugs. So I'm fishing just K15s and K16s on these with nuts. And most of my divers are coming from my Redline series that are in my boat and my X11s. But you can fish these with, with weights and divers and everything. They fish just fine. So um, overall, great rod. They run about three to $400 a piece. Um, I have a few of them. I love them all. Never had anything um, that I had to question with um, no cracks, no breaks, stuff like that. The reel on this one is a Okuma Coldwater SS, the so 354. Um, and I definitely like the SS over the original Coldwater and that, and that lighter gray. It's a little bit smoother. I don't really know the difference in between, but um, I definitely would prefer the SS over these. And I'm probably going to be switching out um, the Coldwater grays to the SS's in my boat. So. This rod right here is the G Loomis IMX. Same thing. It's about three to four hundred dollars. Um, it's got a pretty pretty soft tip and a lot a lot of backbone, so you can definitely handle the the big bite um, takedown from that that plug, and it absorbs it really well. And uh, caught a lot of salmon on both these last year and this year, and uh, definitely definitely love them. But I would prefer the SS over the Okuma. But if you can't find the SS, definitely don't hesitate to buy the 354 Cold Waters. They're awesome reels. I've been using the reels for a couple years now and never had any issues with any of them. Um, I did break a couple of X11s last year, but Lamy Glass, with one email, they had me rods sent within a week. So I was pretty happy about that. I was a little bummed that they broke, but I was really putting these rods to the test with sturgeon, stripers, um, plugs, because I wanted to um have a rod that i can do everything with because I, I have a ton of rods in general and i hate having 15 20 rods in my boat for all for different things so i like to be able to have rods that i can just quickly cut the line and re-rig and be fishing for different stuff so um pretty cool i use these in the lakes use them in the rivers i've actually used the e6x's and the imx's for throwing different um striper lures where i'm using some um divers and trolling those they all work they they work great for everything so they're not just salmon plug rods but that's what i use these for mostly and i'm really really happy with them um but if you don't have any of these rods or you don't have the money to go get some right now specifically for plugs i highly suggest you looking into whatever bait casters you got and if you've got a rod that's seven to eight and a half foot and a medium medium heavy that will work 
for your, your plugs. I've never ever fished spinning setups for um, salmon. I have on my side drifting, but I'm gonna go over that in another another video. But um, I always use bait casting setups. So if you got a bait caster that's for bass um, and it fits that kind of category and it's heavy enough, go ahead and use it because one of the first rods I ever salmon fished with back before I was even in high school as one of my St. Croix bass rods. And I absolutely love this rod and it's still in my boat today. I have, um, I actually have quite a few of these and I use them for salmon. It's a short rod, it's a seven foot rod. It's got a little bit of shorter handle, but it's still got a ton of backbone and a sensitive tip to where that plug will still work. So definitely check out St. Croix. It's one of my favorite rod brands. And um, I'm actually gonna be doing a giveaway for um, people who like subscribe and comment on the videos um, and uh, I'm also be giving one away on our Facebook group which you can look up it's Sacramento River Salmon Fishing and um, so I'm going to be giving some of these away I, I definitely love them they're awesome um, and I'm pretty sure everybody else will love them too they're about three to four hundred bucks for the E6X's that's what this is so um, get yourself in the drawing for one of these like subscribe comment and uh, hopefully we can we can get you one of those rods. So um, the only other rods I wanted to talk about, and I actually don't have any right now. I'm still kind of figuring out what size and what what rods I want to get. But I'm definitely getting some for my boat. And I fish with them with one of my buddies who's a guide in Oregon, and that is Striker rods. Um, striker rods. I was amazed by them. My first time catching some big fish on them, I was like, man, this would be a cool plug rod. It's got a ton of backbone, super sensitive. And uh, it kind of gave me this, this little itch to keep looking at them. I look at them every day and I'm getting ready to pull the trigger on the ones that I want. So if you're um, in the market and you do have the money, look up striker rods, look up some of these rods and uh, look up Lamy Glass. Um, Ukuma makes some great rods as well too for plug fishing, but just try and stay in that um, seven to eight and a half foot range and uh, you should be good. Um, definitely love love all these setups. I, I really don't have any complaints about them. Some of them are a little bit cheaper. Some of them are more expensive, but um, I use these rods on a daily basis. I catch a lot of fish on these rods. And uh, um, like I said, they've been put through the test and they've all performed uh, great. So. Check them out. Um, our next video, next portion, we're gonna go straight into the rigging. It's pretty simple, so check that out. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the river. Um, if you need any help with any of the rod selections or anything like that, feel free to hit me up on social media, leave a comment, um, hit me up on my email, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can and answer whatever questions I can and uh, help you get the gear and uh, get you in some of these tutorials and, and show you how to effectively fish the river and, and um, keep you river ready. Thank you. All right guys, now that we've gone over rods and reels, um, we're gonna go over the rigging real quick. And before I jump right into the rigging, I do wanna let you know that California does have a leader restriction. So in chapter two of the fishing um, handbook, in chapter two, section 2.05, your leader has to be less than 72 inches, which is six foot. So um, always remember that when you're doing these leaders, I generally stay 65 inches or smaller just to give myself that wiggle room and um, keep me from getting a ticket, depending on if your bead chain's really long or you have big clips and it puts you over that 72 inches, it's not worth getting a ticket. So um, definitely read your manual, manual and your regulations for your area and your fishery. Um, so this is about a 40, 48 inch inch leader and I use this for different, different areas. Like I said, I use different lengths for different waters that I'm fishing. And you've got a bead chain that goes straight to a snap. Snap goes straight onto your plug and boom, you're fishing. Super simple, super easy. The knot I'm using is just a general fisherman's knot, nothing fancy. Um, there's a thousand different videos on knots you can use out there. So definitely check out some of those uh, YouTube videos and those YouTubers and, and learn some different knots, but you really don't need to know anything special. So if I'm gonna be fishing weights or divers, what I'll use is a three-way swivel, or I'll actually run the weight um, off of a, a, a another barrel swivel or another bead chain, um, free, free sliding up and down my main line, and I'll use 
um, what I call locator beads or bumper beads just to protect my rods and also so I know when I'm close to getting that uh, getting that swivel so I can get the net ready. It's easy to locate these. They also act as weed stops. So if you've got a lot of weeds coming down, the beads and the swivel will actually catch the weeds before they get to your plug and keep you effectively fishing. But you always want to try and get those weeds off, whether it's by giving it a few big jerks of your rod to, to break them off or um, reeling that plug in and, and pulling them off by hand. So those are a good option. And what I also use are these Team Catfish uh, bumper beads. I use them for sturgeon and striper a lot, but they also work good for the plug um, weights and protection too. So like I said, if I'm using weights, I'm usually using cannonballs and I will go from a, about a one foot to a 24 inch, 18 inch dropper, somewhere in there. And I use one to four to six ounces, just depending on where I'm fishing and current speeds. Um, if I'm using divers, I'll fish them a little bit different. I'll either put a clip straight on to the swivel and clip it onto my three-way swivel or I'll let it free slide up and down my main line. So these are the divers that I'm using. They're jumbo jet divers by Lure Jensen. They say they dive to 50 feet, but I generally don't fish them in water deeper than 30, but they work killer and they're a good combo with your plugs. So these are what they look like new in the package, all kinds of different colors. Um, colors really don't matter. But uh, definitely check them out. For some of my smaller plugs, I'm using the Brad's Mud Dog Divers. Um, they work pretty good too. And um, so yeah, there's a few different options. You can use barrel swivels, you can use three-way swivels, you can use bead chains. I really don't see a, diff a whole lot of difference. I generally use barrel swivels or bead chains when I'm running plugs without any weights. And then like I said, I go straight to a three-way swivel when I'm running jet divers or um, weights with the plugs. And you definitely, definitely need to pay attention to different areas that you're fishing, the depth, the current speed, because that's going to dictate your leader length. And it's also going to dictate what size weight or if you're going to go to a diver. If I'm generally in big pools that have a little bit of current and um, that are pretty deep, I'm usually using my divers. And if I'm in big pools with really rocky bottoms, um, I'll usually go with my divers. Um, I use cannonballs a lot too. Sometimes you'll have to use cannonballs if you're in really, really light water and your plug's not going down because what's happening when you're fishing these plugs without weights is they're actually working at the top and you'll feel it in your rod. Your plug will work down, they'll hit the bottom and they'll come back up. Depending on the type of plug you're using and the brand and manufacturer, they all dive differently into different depths. So that's something you have to think about too when you're fishing these plugs without weights. So I'll go over it a little bit more in my video, but I usually only fish bare plugs and it's because most of the water that I'm fishing is six to 15 foot deep. Sometimes I will put on weights when I'm fishing that 15 foot of water and sometimes I'll have to put on when I'm fishing eight foot of water. It just depends on the current speed and the flows. So definitely think about that. And really the only way you're going to tell, especially with your holes, because they're all going to be different from the ones I fish. Some of them, if you're in my area, will be the same holes, but you always want to go out and try it a few different things. If you're not getting down to the bottom and the fish are holding in that hole, you're probably never going to get one. But if you're fishing what I call fish highways or different areas that fish are going to swim and move, and you're fishing that plug without a weight in less than that 15 foot of water, what your plug's gonna be doing is it's gonna be going down, hitting the bottom, and it's gonna be fishing all the water columns. So you have a pretty good um, pretty good strike zone. You're gonna be kind of all over, those fish are gonna be all over, they're gonna be suspended, they're gonna be on the bottom, they're gonna be on the top, and having that plug without weight will allow you to fish different columns, and you're gonna be able to get fish that you wouldn't get if you were fishing strictly a weight or a diver that's holding you down and hugging you the bottom. So, and like I said, sometimes you do have to do that, but you always let your, what your fish are doing that day, whether they're staged or moving, you let all these other factors dictate how you're going to fish and current flows will, will dictate that just as much. So, um, always, always be changing stuff up. Do one or two drifts. If you're not getting hit on weightless plugs, then switch you know, do a weight, switch to a diver and get down lower and watch your graphs, watch your fish finders, kind of check, see where those fish are at, and get it in their face. If they're, they're suspended, highly recommend no weights, no divers. If they're down on the bottom, 
I suggest you go straight to a weight or a diver. Get your plug down there, get it in their face, and get that reaction bite that you're going for. So um, that's the general rigging, super easy. Like I said, super simple. If you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up on social media, um, comment below, or I'll put my email down there. You can email me, give me a call, and I'll try and answer any questions that you got. And definitely check out some of my other videos. I'm gonna be trying to post the back trolling video this weekend. I'm still working on some editing and it'll go over a lot more in depth of plug leaders and the type of water you're fishing. And I'm actually gonna show you how I'm fishing certain holes and certain runs um, and getting fish. So thanks for watching and uh, definitely like and subscribe. There's gonna be a lot of good content. Thanks. Oh, there he goes. Get him, David. Bring it towards the boat when you got the head up. Oh, don't get near the net. Hold the net.